was praying about 2024. And the Lord spoke to my heart that in 2024, we should get ready to dance. You may not see the wind. The prophet may look like she's lying, looking at the circumstances, but it doesn't matter how tough it will be in the world, you will dance for joy. <laughs> Believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophet, you will prosper. In 2024, you will dance for joy let your amen be very loud in 2024 God will beautify your life and there shall be massive restoration our bishop is in Okitikopa preaching the gospel he was in a book order yesterday everybody be upstanding and as we were praying this morning, as the bishop and I were praying this morning on the phone, he was reminding me of how in 1983, a few months before our wedding, 47 of us went to that same area to preach the gospel. God had not moved us here then. And we had a shipwreck. 13 of us died and God sent back three. We buried 10. We didn't go there for a wedding ceremony. We went to preach the gospel. And we had questions in our hearts because we had gone to that place over and over and over and over again. The church then, where we belonged, shut down for weeks. A pastor was discouraged. But God encouraged him and his wife, our mama, and all of us. So the following year, it was announced in church that the church was going back on the missionary trip. By this time, we were married. And we were asking for volunteers. And my husband was the first person to raise his hand. And I said to him, God did not see her we become a young widow. Please. He said, darling, I will go. Only two of them went. We prayed and prayed and prayed. You don't want to witness that kind of a thing. It's not a story. My first book was written on that, about that experience. Today, many churches are standing there in that place. So he said to me this morning, this is one of the reasons my heart is always drawn to that place. Drawn to that place. And look at it. God now decided to plant us in Ondo State where we had that shipwreck to come and do ministry. What an honor to serve Jesus. He's there. And many lives have been touched. He's doing crusades and, you know, and all that. That's the reason he's not in church this morning. So yesterday he said to me, you're going to be in charge of the service. And I feel, this is the bishop speaking. I feel in my spirit that the church should pray. Wow. And I'm going to be leading you to pray. Please don't be psychedelic this morning. Our father said we should pray. As I'm putting in the word, because we pray Bible prayers. I want you to pray. You didn't come to church this morning to show any wig. Maybe next Sunday you will show wig. This one is about destiny. I want to lead you to pray. I don't know how many prayers, but I know of four major ones from four chapters of the Bible. One from each chapter. Keep it low, please. We are inside the book of Ruth this morning. And in chapter one, we will pray a prayer. Chapter two, we will pray. Chapter 3, we'll pray. Chapter 4, we'll pray. And then we'll share the grace. We'll take the communion. 
the communion for today shall be for acceleration. Did you see my foot? I'm a tenor. You're going to gain speed. You're not just eating bread and wine. You are partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus that has been consecrated. And it will give you speed. Yeah. Sit down for a few minutes and listen. The Titanic. How many of you have heard about the Titanic before? Okay, God bless you. The Titanic was a ship that was going on a voyage. And it sank. So people have said that. They said uh, nothing can sink it, blah, blah, blah. Let's leave that. The Titanic was the first of its kind and the person that captained that voyage, that trip was a five star captain. He wasn't a Kurumu Jeje captain. In fact, that was supposed to be his valedictory trip. He had seen waters. He had captained all sorts. He had traveled and it was a beautiful company. It was a very successful shipping company and they wanted, the company wanted to honor him and said, look, captain, you are going to be the one to be in charge of the Titanic. While the Titanic was on the sea, there was ice. And just like when you are flying, the pilot is connected to, what do they call those people in the tower? The people in charge were warning this captain, beware of ice. He ignored 14 warnings. One, four. He ignored 14 warnings. In fact, the last warning that came from the tower, the control tower said, beware of ice. And he replied, you know, telegraph. He replied, thanks. That is to say, shut up. I know what I'm doing. I'm in charge here. Don't talk to me. The reason was because the eyes he saw, he thought was the only eyes to be seen. He was just looking at the surface. But the eyes underneath was bigger and longer and deeper and heavier. Do you know that after the Titanic sank, it took one month, one whole month, for the ice that sank the Titanic to melt, to let you know how heavy it was. What you don't see is the intangible. What you see is the tangible. And sometimes, in fact, a lot of the times, what you don't know can kill you. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. I'm a coach, so there are several levels of knowledge. Le several levels of awareness. Assumption, when you assume, is the lowest form the lowest level of knowledge. The you that cannot be seen is more than the you that can be seen. When you wake up in the morning and you look at the mirror, you look at yourself and the mirror, the person you see is not you, it's your body. Just like Mr. Waya, you say, my book, my glasses, 
Mr. Olukwano, my Bible. Who is that my? That my you cannot see. My hand, my head, my brain. You don't see that my. That is the most important. That is how life works. What you don't see, the intangible is more important than the physical, the tangible. That's why you cannot afford to joke with the intangible, which is the spiritual. You can't live your life just based on makeup, wig, shoes, jewelries, canvas, cars. Life is deeper than that. Whether you are aware or not, like my husband will say, there are people that are not happy that you are happy. There are people that are giving you ill will, ill, not good will. There are people that are giving you ill, you know there's what we call good will. There's what we call ill will. It has a presence. It does. People wishing that your marriage will collapse. There is what you call ill will, ill will. There are people that don't like you. I'm not scaring you, it is the truth. You are deceiving yourself if you think everybody likes you. Some people like you for who you are. Who you are is the reason why some people hate you. That's the truth. You cannot afford to joke with your relationship with God. You cannot afford to joke with the intangible. It can sink destiny. There are altars that are being raised. You see, that's why all of us cannot worship in the same church. There are some churches and there are some ministers that all they are called to do or what they do is Satan is this, Satan is that, Satan is that, Satan is that. I don't condemn them, that's all they do. Some, all they teach is you must be holy, you must be holy. If you're not holy, you'll go to hell. If you're not holy, you That's... God has departmentalized it. But what is important is the balance. In this ministry, we teach you possibility. That there is nothing you cannot be, you cannot do, and you cannot have. But we don't want your life or your destiny to be based on only what you see. We talk to you about your relationship with God. That is the intangible. And it is two sides. The positive and the negative. There are people that will say you will never have a child right from your wedding day. There are people that are in the office and they will say you will never rise. Spiritual things are real. Spiritual warfare is real. There are people that want you to travel and not return. So when we come up on the stage or on the altar and we tell you to do spiritual warfare, we don't, we don't concentrate on the devil. But we have enough spiritual sense to know that spiritual things are real. So when it's time to pray, please pray. Don't just be a psychedelic Christian that thinks that uh, it doesn't matter anything, you know. My husband loves me. I don't need to be praying about my marriage. He has vowed. No, it may not be his fault. Have you seen a professor that slept with one girl in a bedroom? That serves Amala. That booker, that mama puts a whole professor. And he's asking himself, what did I do? Why? Why did I do this? My husband had to handle a situation where a professor in America, he said he was just hearing a voice that he should come back to Nigeria. He packed his stuff, came back to Nigeria. He said he heard that he should do farming. And he began to use hoe and cutlass. He would dress funny. He said he's hearing a voice. Ho and cutlass, not mechanized farming. Spiritual things are real. You cannot afford to sleep the sleep of death. So God has awakened the bishop's spirit that we should pray. And I'm here to carry out that assignment. Are you ready to pray? You know, I always tell you what is good needs 
What is not good needs prayer, but it is what is good that needs more prayer. You see the way I pray about my marriage, and my marriage is fantastic. I'm glad to even let you know that next year, our marriage, my marriage to the bishop will be 40 years. 40. So get ready for celebration. And our bishop will be 70. So we have double celebration by God's grace. You will be alive to celebrate with us. And we will be alive. Ruth chapter 1 is the first prayer. The entire chapter. The Bible says that there was a man called put it there. Chapter 1 verse 1. It was a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, who went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Move on. Verse 2. The name of the man was Elimelech. God is king. That's the meaning. This man left the place of covenant because of a temporary situation. Went to Moab, a cursed land. Because he smelt bread. Lost his life. Lost his sons. That will have become the extension of his life. Just because of one single wrong move. If I give you the prayer point, all of you that are husbands here. Please listen to your wives. You did not marry a dummy. In the African culture, somebody started, shut up, hit up, hit up. Let's change the trajectory. Your wife is not a slave. Let's go back to the Bible. Your wife is a helper. When you say somebody is a helper, if I approach Pastor Adewi and I say, Pastor, can you give me 1,000 naira? It supposes or presupposes that he has it more than I have. If I have it, I will not. All things being equal. Your helper is stronger. Your wife is the accountant general of the state. Just because she's your wife, you will not allow her Handle family finances. Is it genitals that we use to determine destiny? I'm the man. You know what I mean by that? Is it genitals? Is it because of what you carry under your, your trousers? That's what makes you marriage. Where one is stronger, let that one take charge. It doesn't reduce you. Many men are dead. Many men are dying. Many things they have produced as children, business, destiny, dead, dying, because they will not listen. Listen to your wife, uncle. Many things are killing husbands outside. Listen. The male factor is being attacked. Listen. Listen to the helpers that God has put, positioned around you. It is not by backing that your wife or your children will respect you. A time is coming, First Kings chapter 1, when you will be cold and you will need covering clothes. They will remember how you treated them. One wrong move. That man's destiny was swallowed. The first prayer point this morning, I told you four. You're going to pray fervently. Father, in the name that is above every name, guide me. I will not miss my destiny. That prayer is very simple, but it is loaded. If my husband did not come to own those states to found Agape, Agape would still have been founded. We would be the only ones missing. For God to change his program, he will change the man. 
Father, guide me. The world is noisy. Your voice must be heard. You need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Everybody, please stand up and pray this prayer. Guide me, guide my children. Every destiny diversion, I come against you in the name of Jesus. I will not be in the wrong place at the right time. I will not be in the wrong place at the right time. I pray, pray oh, you are the reason for this service. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, guide us. No wrong decision about my business, about my ministry, about marriage, about my children, about my finances, about my health. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Guide me, Lord. It will show who prayed. <laughs> Father, guide me in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. We're still in chapter 1. And I want to bring one more prayer point out of that. You're going to pray, Father, everything that gives me joy shall not be destroyed. Now listen. Three days ago, it was even my husband that told me, even during the convention, I still bought from her. She had two children. I started buying from her husband many years ago, many years ago. The man was also a musician. And then the man was ill. We got to know if we. God helped us to help him. He came to the house after he was discharged. We were all happy. We were rejoicing. Ah, you made it. Blah, blah, blah. Two weeks after he had come, we heard that he died. It broke my heart because we loved him. What killed him? Fake drugs. After he was discharged, he was fine. They gave him the list of what he would buy. But it was the wrong thing that they were supplying. You can imagine how that woman would feel. This was about three years ago. This woman picked up her life. That was one of the reasons I continued to patronize her. Very sweet woman. Very, very, very lovely. Very gracious woman. Mommy, you're going to pay 500,000. No, 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 no. I will be paying 400. Mommy, you know I cannot even argue with you. When I got to the market, lovely woman. And then three days ago, her son died. This son. She had brought this son. She had labored over this son. When the boy was giving her problem, I said, look, Bishop knows how to relate to these teenagers. He has a call in that area. I told my husband, please, minister, you know, because I don't know what happened. That boy gave her trouble. This boy was an architecture student. He just finished. He just signed off. She spoke with me three days. I still caught her yesterday. Mommy, I can't go for, for, for graduation. Moya, 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 mommy, you know now. Borrowed money, borrowed money, borrowed money, put it together. Pray, oh. It It may be at work, it may be in the office, it may be in the family, it may be from anywhere. How can people be that wicked? Do you know the pain? The pain of the loss of a child is the greatest pain on earth. That's why when people lose their children, I am over patient with them. Over patient. Because I'm so called Which one do you want to remember? Malaria or day of bread or day of. Only two children and they still took another. They took one. Architecture just finished last week. Private university. So when Naomi said, Call me no more, Naomi. She knew what she was saying. Whatever is good in my life, whatever gives me joy, shall not be wasted. Are you praying in church this morning? Oluwa, I want Oluwa. You are the, the defender. You are the preserver. I will not cry again. Whatever gives me joy, husband, children, grandchildren, whatever Lord you know it that gives me joy the enemy will not be able to touch it 
Defend me, O oh God. Protect us, O oh God. Jehovah, shield us. The sun shall not smite us by day. The moon shall not smite us by night. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon everything that gives me joy. I plead the blood of Jesus upon everything that gives me joy. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon everything that gives me joy. Satan, I rebuke you. I come against joy terminators. I come against every arrangement of hell. I come against every weapon fashioned against us. You will not prosper. I came to church this morning to pray. I have thanked God. Now I am praying that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever gives me joy, whatever gives me dignity, whatever is a blessing in my life, whatever makes me feel good, whatever God has given to me shall be preserved, shall be protected. In the name of Jesus, affliction shall not rise. Yea, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment I condemn. Every evil arrow go back to the sender. 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 You wish me evil, you will carry it with your head. You wish me evil, let it go back to you. Hey, I am in the house of the Lord today. I don't have any other God. I don't have any other power. It is only God I have. I bring my husband. I bring my children. I bring my grandchildren. I bring my businesses. I bring my ministry. I bring my life. I bring every relationship that gives me joy under the cover of the Holy Spirit, under the cover and the protection of the blood of Jesus Christ. No cancer, no sickness, no ajaniru, no devourer. By the blood of the Lamb we prevail. By the blood of the Lamb we prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we have prayed. As you are speaking before the Lord, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. We move to chapter 2. I will soon be done. If somebody asks you, what did you preach in church today? Say, we went to pray. We prayed about our destinies. Life is a living organism. Cells die. Other cells are replaced. When you sleep, for instance, cells are being replaced. Every 60 days, your liver is self-regenerating. When you sleep, your hair is growing. Your nails are growing. Your body is renewing. Those of you that don't sleep, well, let me bring this. You will always see coaching in this. Thing. Those of you that always deprive yourself of sleep, this is scientific. Let me tell you this. When you don't sleep as you should sleep, you gain fat and you lose muscles. So some of you are saying, I'm just getting fat. And I fast, oh, and I do exercise. So do you sleep well? When you don't sleep well, you gain fat and you lose muscles. Those of you that don't dance in church, you think it's God you are doing. You are doing yourself. Because when you move, you know it helps you. It helps your body. If you have a wristwatch like my own now, it's telling you how many steps you have taken. Every time they say dance, you will sit down. I say you are getting fatter. Every time they say dance, you, you'll be doing chakara. And you know how you used to dance at discos? That was just by the way. We are in chapter 2. She left. And she came to the city. And in that city, God planted somebody 
that's helped her for the next season. That's chapter 2. There was one person that should have helped. I've, I've taught this over and over, so I don't want to go into it because before you can redeem somebody, you must fulfill three conditions. There was one person that should have fulfilled that condition. The person said, no, I don't want to. That's why I always pray that you will not miss who you should meet and you will not meet who you should miss. You know, I always pray that prayer for you. So now we want to ask God to please Plant helpers in our lives in this new season. This year is almost done. The reason why some of you have not been able to accomplish your goals is because help your name. You need help. There are helpers. Possibilitarians. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. There is money. Let me just not talk about it. I am one village girl, only helped by God. If you see me accomplish this, oh, she has built this, oh, she has built that. It is because I received help. That's what that means here. He knows what I'm talking about. Help new for strange reasons. There will just be a lot. If you don't know how your mates are making it, you will kill yourself. Help, wow. You know, no one knew. Chapter 2 and chapter 3, let me put it together, self. There is a boy somewhere, somebody that is capable, that has the capacity to help me in this new season. God, send my way, people, send it to my children. Pray, oh, I'm leading you to pray now. Let's combine chapter 2 and chapter 3. That will give me incredible testimonies. I have dreams in my heart. Things I will be able to do, oh God, I need help. You are here. This is your house, God. And I know if there is a place where you answer prayers, where you hear prayers. Uh, that was why Solomon prayed in your house, not in his house. I am here today thanking you for all the helps I have received and asking you that in this new season, oh God, please send me another series of help. Help, help in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is why I came to church, oh God, I need help. Help for this new season. Oh, do I help? Help me, Lord. Help me through human beings. God, help me through human beings. Stir up the hearts of my helpers from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In Nigeria, outside Nigeria, let them remember me. My helpers that are sleeping and snoring, wake them up. Let heaven wake them up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wake them, Lord. Wake them up. My help will not go to the wrong address. My help will locate me, financial help, ministerial help, help for my business, help for my academics. Anybody that will not help me, uproot them from my life, uproot them from my destiny, uproot them from my school, uproot them from my business, uproot them from my ministry. Anyone that will be used of the devil to intimidate me, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, take their slippers. Like we see in the book of Ruth. They are sanders, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let my helpers be gracious unto me. People that will fetch water and ask me to come and drink. People that will leave it on purpose for me. Like you did for Ruth. Oh God. My helpers will not die. My helpers will not be helpless. My helpers will not be angry with me. My helpers will not be confused. Nobody will instigate my helpers against me. Every tongue that rises up against me in the presence of my helpers, I judge you. I plead the blood of Jesus upon this new season. This new season 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. So we are done with chapter 2 and chapter 3. I was going to break because there was Boaz and there we had the young men that dropped on purpose. But we want to go to chapter 4 now. We're in the book of Ruth, chapter 4. The Bible says that Ruth got married and she had a child. And her neighbors gathered and said to her, your daughter that is better than seven sons have given, has given birth to this child. And I love what the Bible says that Naomi nursed the child. Chapter 1. When they were calling for mothers, she could only come for ex-mothers meeting. But here, she had a baby that could be nursed. I have an orphanage, like some of you know. A one-day-old baby was brought three days ago. Every time I see those children, the mother in me, something, something happens to me. You see the, the innocence of the baby. A baby boy. You see the innocence. It reawakens. When I started adopting, the first baby I adopted, I wanted to breastfeed her. I wanted to put my breast in her mouth. There is something about it. So imagine what happened to Naomi. She was in the winter of her life, but joy still came. People still gathered to rejoice with her. I want you to pray. If she had died, listen, Ruth would still have had that child. And another neighbor would have been nursing the child. Because Obed needed to come so that Jesse could come so that David could come, so the Lord Jesus Christ could come in the physical. Ah, may you not be replaced at the junction of your glory. Yeah. I want you to ask God for sound health. I want you to ask God for preservation. Listen, beloved. Some of you know how some students died in Futa. My nephew, I got home and I saw him I said, ah, why are you home? He said, you're supposed to be writing your exam from Osho State. He said, several students died. Clinic. School clinic. I said, there's something in the atmosphere. They are killing students. Witches are rising up in their coven. They have told them to, because they need the young blood to renew. The, they, some of them need promotion. I said, something is happening on our campuses. Can you imagine? Party students. You know what it takes to be in school. Just a few parents, let me say this so, on behalf of your children. It's not easy to read though. I'm in school. Stop shouting at them. It is not easy to assimilate. I do anything like It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Students are be. Ah. Hmm. It's not easy to, to read though and assimilate. And some of our mates are even witches. They are in the class. Looking for whose, whose brain to transfer. You don't believe in these things. You know, I don't talk about them like this, but it's real. It's real, oh. They are in the market. They are telling us. They are, they, are they are looking for how to snatch spiritual. They are, they are in the church. She be one came to, to um, propose to my husband. I be you have forgotten. I want to marry you, sir. My husband said, I have four children. He said, I know. I've been in this church for three years or before five years. And she was coming to teach my children in home, home lesson. That was the Holy Ghost fire gone. That was, that was the time my children didn't do well in their exam. 
Excuse me, you know I'm your pastor's wife. I just came to be helping because I know you are there. I said, is she alone? No, no, I didn't ask the Lord. Only for her to come and propose to my husband that she wanted to marry me. I said, Tan me born. Do you know how many years I've been working on this marriage? Do you know, do you know what I have put in this marriage? You think Bishop Felix Adejibo just appeared as a handsome man? When that Ajaba used to stand on the road, while he would be picking coats, not suits, from those Hausa boys, when I would be hawking, and the Baba that used to, to beat Shekeredia would be selling Gary for me. He would be selling Gary to me, not for me, Abi. To me. <laughs> My kiosk is still there at St. Louis. Laboring. Because we, said we will not touch one cup of this church. Selling kerosene, selling yam, selling ogede, selling everything. While the man was building the ministry. Building the ministry. You want to marry him. Go fit, yeah. Marry who? That man that did... Movie, I mean, I did drama like only crazy, they, they crazy you. I be crazy and crazy. You can't marry my husband, though. If Naomi had died, that baby would still have come. That's what we call labor loss. I want you to ask her because nurses can try, Dr. Oni can try, Dr. Louis can try. It is God that preserves the care God cures. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, no sickness, no call. Whatever kills people, it will not come near me. Maago, maato, maabelaye. My seat shall not be vacant. I am my husband's wife. I am my children's mother. I am my grandchildren's grandma. If Jesus tarries, I remain my great grandchildren's great grandmother. By the blood of the lamb from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. The snare is broken and I have escaped. No cancer of any kind. No evil. No stray bullets. No accidents. No ear crash. No. No shipwreck. The blood. That gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. <laughs> the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain mountain and flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain, mountain, and flows to the lowest valley, valley. The blood that gives me strength from day today it will never lose its power I plead the blood of Jesus upon all of us upon all our loved ones nobody will gather to mourn with us this year we have but when it is time to harvest, we will not be represented. In the evening of our lives, our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren shall surround our table. 
We will not suddenly become widows or widowers. All of you, our children, in the name of Jesus, no matter the waste. The Bible talks about the arrows that flies by day. Hey, hey. The Bible talks about that one that wasted, it wastes. Pestilences that wasted at noonday. Noonday is mid-year when you are young. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, none will locate you. The blood that gives us strength cannot lose its power. Therefore, I shield everyone with that blood. Everything that has our signature is protected. A thousand may fall on our right side. And ten thousand on the left. It will not come near us. We are preserved. We are protected. By the mercy of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And I destroy every yoke of sin in the life of everyone here. There will be no room for the devil to afflict you. Everyone giving his or her life to Jesus Christ today. I decree that you will love God and you will serve him. Everyone that is a Christian. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will be established. You will be where no devil can harm you. In the Agape family we go from glory to glory. From strength to strength. For the Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty. Everyone trust and go for anything. Whoever says no, when God has said yes, we remove them. We create that position for you. And we enthrone you there. Whoever is ganging up against you, we decree in the name of Jesus that the Lord scatters them. On this altar, you will testify. You are the next to be lifted. The next to be promoted. Just of in business, everyone around you, serving you one, the devil will not use them against you in the name of Jesus. In this new month, the blood will speak on our behalf. And there shall be incredible testimonies. Thank you, Father. The name of Jesus we've prayed. Hallelujah. Everybody celebrates. This is for progress. It's for acceleration.